Hey, good morning. Trendy's back, can you tell? This is my predator style. Check it out. I can tell you, this don't happen by just me. It happens thanks to Trinity. I got some serious stuff to talk about today. That next chapter I'm working on, it. there's a couple rough spots in it, and I kind of want to give some people some idea, just so they'll know when the chapter's written, it does actually get to better parts later on. Yeah. In case you didn't notice, I posted on there, we're up to 186 earthquakes. Not to mention... That, that pegged out number 99, we went well past that now. Uh, last time I looked, we were at 116. Over five magnitude earthquakes. Yeah, the Loyalty Islands over there, they decided Thumper went back down there and started hitting the old bass drum again. The last one I'm showing right now, well, 5.1 again, 113 minutes ago. China, Japan, but the Loyalty Islands had like five of them in a row this morning. Two hours ago. And again at four hours ago. And four hours ago. And five hours ago. It sounds kind of rhythmic, doesn't it? Just like a pulse. Almost as if Mother Earth was coming to life. There's stories about that. Did you ever hear that? There's stories about that. Every time she comes to life and changes her makeup, you might say. Hello, Pamela. Tina. You know, I kind of figure more people are going to be sitting in their house today. Now, how many of them got electricity? Well, don't say nobody told you. Because huh? somebody told you. And the climate. Hey, by the way, does everybody see the climate is thawing in D.C. in spite of all this snow? Why? They just unfroze the pipeline. Acquittal. You know. Truth busting through the blockade of barriers, beavers built, flies, logs of bullshit all piled up. They got blown out. Damn it. Oops. So, Tuesday afternoon unfolds. We're talking about 1049 millibars. That's 1049 millibars over center United States. Now, this is not meaningful to most people. But let us say this. That's a lot of pressure on the surface of the ground. It's a lot of pressure on people. Believe it or not. If you got bad bones, if you got steel plates in you, that barometric pressure, you know what I'm talking about. And then I add cold into it. Freezing cold where the steel pins in you just start to ache and hurt. There's so many people suffering out there right now. I want to give you my sympathy. My empathy, I should say. I'm bad on sympathy, but empathy I will give you. Hey, Shelly. Lori, my goodness, we got a bunch of good people on Terry, my goodness. Hey, um, by the way, this is not supported. You don't have to pay anything. There's no monitor. Well, there's a monitor who doesn't work. There's a cameraman, a light man, a makeup man, a costume guy, but they don't ever get any credit or get paid. So, just so you all know. Same on my websites, uh, on my uh, YouTube channels. Can't get any money out there for some reason. So, um, I do want to go ahead and let y'all know, especially the ones that just zip me a little text. I'm online trying to do something here. Um, pipes are frozen, and and know what? Hey, I'm sorry, Renee. You are just the beginning. There are going to be pipes frozen in places nobody even knew could freeze in the streets. We already got mains. The city mains are busting in Luling, Texas. Now I'm telling you what, Luling is down south. <laughs> I mean, like we don't do that down here. We are now. It's not that we didn't think it was possible, but you know how impossible. What, what's impossible mean? What can you do? What's impossible and what's not possible? Now, put that in God's court. What's possible? Well, I want to tell you. We got problems. 60 mile an hour winds, blizzards coming across New Mexico and Texas and through Dallas. Dallas is getting into the serious cold temperatures. We're talking minus 12 in Amarillo, guys. I'm not a weatherman. I'm not a doctor. 
I'm not a commentator, I'm not a newsman, I'm a fictional writer working on a story, and these are the conditions in which the story is being written in, and thankfully, you all are there to be a watch, because you got no place to go. If you're smart, don't get out on the road. Hey, Audrey. Uh, man, Southern Missouri is going to get cream, too. This is, um, for you guys in the middle of the country, mm-mm. Three foot of ice on the water tanks this morning. Yeah, we're going to start seeing some roofs crushing in. We're going to start seeing some really sorry consequences to this. Animals dying, pets dying, people dying. I wrote a little poem. I couldn't help it. Death calls with an icy sword. Taking lives of all forms known. Plants and pets. Those in the wild. This cold brings death. Nothing mild. Prepare to stay warm now with plenty of water. Care for your friends, the elders, and others. Pray for the homeless, the stranded, alone. Care for your friends, the elders, and others. I want you to pay a lot of attention to that. I break rhythm because right now, dang. You can die in a couple hours in this weather without heat. You fall on your way out someplace, like a picture I just saw of a little old lady, 80 years old, and does face plant into the ice. May never get up. Freeze to death before they get up. It's estimated it took my son less than a couple of minutes to freeze in the river, in the same river. Don't fall into water in that kind of weather. You won't get out, and if you do get out, you're going to freeze to death within minutes. You'll frostbite your skin in less than 15 minutes of it being exposed. Yeah. You can literally frostbite your eyeballs. You can literally frostbite your face. Your cheeks, your skin will rot off your face in the weather we're getting up north right now. If you're unprotected and you get out there and you don't plan for it. And in the old stories all the time, people would leave their front door to go out to their garage and never make it for the blizzard being blown away, literally blown out of their path and not being able to see or find their tracks to get back to their house. That's what a blizzard is. 35 miles an hour with heavy snow. We're going to be having 60 mile an hour winds with heavy snow coming from New Mexico into Texas. 60. That'll blow you down. And if you're a poor cow, a horse, well, let's just say the toll is going to be heavy. Prepare to stay warm now with plenty of water. Care for your friends, the elders, and others. Pray for the homeless, the stranded alone, those without power, those without phones. Know this will last for much longer than past. Growing the snowpacks amazingly fast. Serious black ice. No one on the roads. Please, my dear humans, if not needed, don't go. Stay off the roads, everybody. If you don't have to get on the road, don't. If you do, make sure you got everything you need in that car. Blankets, heaters, food, water. And don't stay in the car if you get stopped. It'll take the heat out of you. Shorts and a sweatshirt. Shelly, you know, I'm amazed. Some people don't realize until it's too late. No, we're not used to it down in Texas. But when you talk about up there, when you talk about Texas, I'm telling you about a couple inches of snow in Texas is like dropping eight feet in Minnesota. I mean it. There are people in Texas, and this is a very important point. There are people, there are kids born right now. 50 million kids that never saw the, the snows of the 73 which I got to see, 72, I frostbitten. Yeah, I mean, frostbitten. Literally, my hands and my feet. So, it ain't nothing if you're prepared. I got snowsuits down here in Texas. I got thick gloves. I got hats. I got, I mean, everything in the world I could have down here in the middle of nowhere, but that was crazy. I'm down in Texas. Why would you have that crap? Guess what? You could this week. Mom saved a busload of kids back in the 30s by leading them to a nearby farmhouse after dark when they saw the light. That was Lori Hooper saying that. Yeah, see, this thing, people understand, in the 30s and 40s, there were snows up north. There were snow deep. I've seen pictures of them where they had 30 foot 
30 foot snow drifts they had literally cut tunnels through things they had to cut literally channels through the snow and mind you in the early days when they were exploring this country they ate each other up there because they had no food yeah 70s you're right and it was in the 70s i got frostbit i was 16 years old hitchhiking cross country from michigan to oklahoma 16 easter Six inches of snow hit Michigan. I said, I'm getting out of here. I'm going. And a friend of mine and I went and hitchhiked down to Oklahoma. Nearly froze to death in Chicago. Stupid. I was a kid. Mom couldn't say anything. She hitchhiked cross country when she was 16 years old, too. Yeah, except she didn't tell anybody. They were kind of worried. Her and her girlfriend just went from Michigan to California and back. So when I said I was going to do it, it's kind of hard for her to say, no, you can't do that, son. And as I usually did, I didn't really ask as much as went. Learned a lesson. Learned lots of lessons. Those are other stories. Parts of the chapters. In Arkansas in those days, having a little bit of long hair meant you walked into a restaurant, freezing cold rain outside and sit down. That means you didn't exist. They didn't serve you. The waitress would walk by you and ignore you. And you just were left with no food. And in that case, we slept in sleeping bags with trash bags on top of us so we wouldn't get wet and freeze that night. Got up the next day, got on the highway, and a guy picked us up. He said, hey, I'll take you out to the state line, man, because last year when I was hitchhiking through here, they threw me in jail, shaved my head, took all my money, uh, and put me back on the road again. Told me never come back to Arkansas again. I didn't hitchhike back through Arkansas. I went through Oklahoma and up to the top. It was a crazy days in the 70s, and that's when I still hitchhiked. Not long after that, they started killing hitchhikers. There was a racial war going on, blacks and whites killing each other. It's crazy. We're going back to that, aren't we? No. Let's say no. Those of you who were there, no. Those of you who saw Vietnam afterwards, no. And that's my next thing. Where are the homeless? Guys, six out of ten homeless are women veterans. Yeah. Came back, damaged goods. Families wouldn't take them back in. Too crazy. They're on the streets. In this weather. They're in shelters, some of them, if they're lucky. Please. Where are the homeless, the veterans torn? From the fabric to warm them. Those people are cold. They fought for our freedom. Yet they have no home. While some find a fire, others will roam. Freezing to silence, to sleep ever on. Till spring comes, and some ask, where have they all gone? Please, locally, where are your homeless? Where are your veterans? Are they out in the cold? I've offered so many times to give materials to veterans to build houses for the other veterans. Nobody's ever taken me up on it in 15 years. It's times like these that I call out to people, please, 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 take care of your old veterans, those old buggers. If you're broken. Now more than ever, they need your help. Please, pay attention. Right now they're hungry, and they're cold, and they're alone. And it's Valentine's Day. Where are you? Cozy? Warm? Got your food? Didn't bother to look out the window, see if there's anybody out there sleeping in the street underneath cardboard. Hmm. In the sleeping bag, maybe, if they're lucky. Well, the place to stash their stuff in the daytime so they come back at night and have it. Probably like my son in Paris. In those last days. Mm-hmm. And in the cold, when he fell in the water and drowned, or was pushed, or whatever happened. I want you to think about all those people out there. The cold. 
I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm never gonna wake up. When I was 17, I was hitchhiking to Michigan. I was poor. I'm gonna go in the army. I had a sleeping bag. It wasn't much of a sleeping bag. When I had a good one, my mom and dad gave me a, uh, a gift, another sleeping bag. So I took it as a courtesy. It was to go ahead and um, just be nice, except it wasn't worth a shit. It was kind of to take over to a friend's house, stay in his living room. Excuse me. I'm sorry. And uh, so I was hitchhiking up there, 17 years old. I was a little bit familiar with the world, a little naive. It was snowing Lima, Lima, Ohio, I believe. And I got a ride late in the night. And it was a guy who picked me up, a shoe salesman. And I'm a young 17 year old boy, signed up for the army, couldn't get in yet because he had to be 18 to join. I mean, actually enter. I got to join, but I couldn't enter. And waiting in the Vietnam era. So I decided to hitchhike up to Michigan, back down to Alabama before I went. And, and I'd, I'd done hitchhike before. So, I mean, but this time around, I was hitchhiking up north to see some people, and it was, I got caught in the snow, cold. And this guy picks me up and he says, man, you can come to my house, my roommate, you know, you can stay on the floor, you'd be okay, you'd be warm. And I, I was scared. Unjustifiably scared. Only because I wasn't real familiar with the world and the way things worked. And from everything I could tell, this guy was probably gay. And I didn't have anything against gay guys. I knew gay guys. But I didn't want to be put into a position at somebody's house where I might be compromised and not be able to do anything about it. And he assured me I'd be okay. He tried to get me to go there and just sleep so I wouldn't sleep out in that cold. When you're stupid or when you're ignorant or when you're afraid to take help, you can make bad decisions. So with a stupid sleeping bag without even it being a cocoon bag, probably good for about 50 degrees, 45 degrees, it was good. But I had him drop me off at the last place before he turned. And I crawled underneath a tree in the snow. It was only a foot deep under the tree. Big old fir tree. And it was a lot deeper out there. And in the distance I could see a convenience store. But I didn't have any money. And I couldn't hang out there. So I tried to go to sleep. And I took my boots off and I climbed in my sleeping bag. Just like a homeless person would do. And I had been homeless before. And... um as the night grew on, I got colder, I was shivering, and oof, God, how am I gonna make it? And I didn't sleep much, because I remember then, if you fall asleep when you're that cold, you may not wake up. You need to stay awake when you're that cold. You need to suffer and shiver, because the shivering keeps you alive. So I did, luckily. In the morning time, I got out of that bag and damn, I didn't put my boots inside that bag. Lesson. Why? Because your boots look like this. They cup. When they get cold and freeze, they cup. So I cracked them and got my feet back in my boots and dragged my sleeping bag and all my stuff out to the road. Not to the convenience store. Again, I didn't have any money. And I got on the highway and started going out. Yeah. And I got a ride. And he picked me up. I didn't even roll it in my sleeping bag. And I got in. I was just shivering. He had his heater on. And he just saw me. He was like, he was only going five miles. But he stopped. When he let me off. Let me warm up. And then I got back out again. And went on down the road. Good job. You don't know how important those things are, but that fear that night almost got me killed. That man meant nothing but good. He cared. I was afraid. So instead of accepting that and sleeping on his floor in the warmth, I nearly died over my pride. The pride works in many ways. It can take you down. 
It can kill you. It can destroy your perception. So you don't see what's being offered to you. You think it's possibly going to hurt you instead of help you. And I want to tell you something. Right now, if you need help, don't be ashamed to take it. And if it's good people, thank you for giving it. Yes, people will take advantage of you in hard times. I'm not telling you, don't keep your sensors up. I'm not telling you, don't let your instincts drive you to some degree. What I am telling you is this, guys. Think about those other people out there right now. This is some really serious crap right on top of other serious crap. Yeah, we got in a little bit of truth. Yes, we broke through one more dam, one more barrier. Liars and thieves. But in the meantime, we crippled our country at a critical time. We got no trucks running. We got nobody in the top that gives a shit about anybody at the bottom. Luling, Texas today, we got foreign troops going through our town. Videos of military equipment. And it's not ours. Why? Don't know. Maybe to help give vaccines out, they say. Maybe. Why do we need help from other governments right now? Please, tell me. Did Uncle Biden bid on and the commies decide we might need help that I don't think we need? Again, as a veteran, these things can pop up in your mind when you see foreign troops on our soil and you wonder, why well, are they doing an exercise and passing through Luling, Texas? Hmm. In my fantasy story, of course, of wibbery and wub, about that world union of believers that we, all of us eyes, are forming. Yeah, actually, it's a lot funnier than this video. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. I want y'all to understand this. You're not alone. We will get through it. There is a light. Literally. A light. On the other side of the horizon. I want to make it really clear that it's unwarranted right now to be in fear. Fear will kill you. Distorts your perception. Screws up your ability to make a clear and smart decision. Fear is what they're using. I say they, and that would assume that maybe there are forces at work. The yin and the yang. The good and the evil. Imagine that. But I want to assure you, yes. And I do this from my heart, believe it or not. Not for money. Not for donation. I don't even think I have a place where you could donate, do I? No. This is what a fictional character does to maintain an existence in a fictional world. A digital world. That one on the other side of your screen you're looking into with this beautiful tree behind me. There is something important going on right now, guys. A lot of distraction. A lot of lies. A lot of people who believe the lies. Now, I want to assure you this. There are legions, legions, warriors of light. Now, you wouldn't know they're all here because that wouldn't be right. But I want to assure you something. That sort of fabled white hats, the backup from other places, other Parts of the cosmos, 
maybe where others more intelligent, maybe more peaceful than us have been around for so long we can't even count. And I suppose they were going to say, hey, let's go watch the show. Watch out! Uh, Earth. It's getting ready to go through some real serious changes. Well, how do you know? <laughs> Come on, guys. God knows what's going on. You don't think he's sharing it with all those minions in the middle, the legions of light? How do you think we got here? Yeah. We volunteer. We sign up. Mm -hmm. Some of us nickname Indigo and all sorts of other things. You take form. You take body. You incarnate. You take on this gelatinous shell. You shape it. And experience life. As a being. To understand how this system works. To help know the difference between the wheat, the chaff, the weeds, the bugs, the pests. All created for a purpose. To teach us. To experiment. To play. I don't mind being an object to be played with by God. That's what I'm here for. Part of the plan. Except it's fluid. It can change. We do make a difference. Me. A long time ago when I was a kid, they said, what difference can one person make? As I was growing up, I saw JFK. I listened to his words still. I assure you, that one man made a difference. I have a dream. The man that made that line famous, one of my favorite men on the planet. Unfortunately, Mr. King met a violent demise, as did Malcolm X. as did John McCartney. As did anybody that sang about love by Marley. FBI had him, FBI had him as the most dangerous black man in the world at one time. And the CIA helped give him the cancer in the foot through a needle. Thanks to our Nazi transplanted cancer research institute focused on how do you give people cancer, particularly at that time, Castro and others during the times of Kennedy. So many of the people in America don't know these things, and that's why it's part of a fictional book, because really, who knows anything? It's just fiction, as told by this person or that person, and it's called literature. And some person gets called literature means they did a good enough job of writing it. It's not a comic book. It's not a paperback or yellow journalism. It's a literature. I study literature. At what point is literature literature versus just some fool writing about a bunch of stuff on paper that nobody reads? I say nobody reads because most people don't read anymore. The entry to this, I don't know, maybe 1,500 words. You can't imagine how few people will read that to the end. And it's the best thing about what I did today probably was right. This is, in effect, writing in this day and age. It's the ability to tell you stories, communicate with you in such a way that you'll see, not just with your ears, not just with your eyes reading print on paper, but every single time a digital image is passed in front of your eyes, as the saying goes, it speaks a thousand words. So if you add a thousand words to every second that you see me, then you know when I go, that meant something. So when I say, 
I really back that bidding on a president principle that you can lie, steep anything you want to do as long as you win. When I say something like that, and you see these things, that's because I'm mimicking. Mimicking. Making fun of something I have absolutely very little tolerance for. Liars, cheaters, demons in disguise that would kill off millions of people if it meant making their political party stronger. So as you put on your one mask and you put on your second mask and you try to go out there and breathe, well, hey, it's going to keep your face warm. Not so bad. Take them off in your house. Please, take them off in your damn car. Stop wearing masks all the time right now and start breathing deep, getting healthy, getting over the fear so that when your turn comes, if it comes, and somebody's kind enough to give you the chance to survive, you'll be worth saving. Yeah, I said that. Because right now, I'm sorry, guys. One of the problems you got when you're a legionnaire, a warrior, and you have to go into battle, let's say with sword, medieval. And there are people wandering around that shouldn't be out there that got no business being in a battle. But they're the support team for the bad guys. They're the ones out there carrying the lies, carrying the buckets of water that are splashed upon the people, the tar in support of them, the slime, the ones that are helping back up lies. That's the guys on the other team. So when I go out there and I start swinging that sword as a warrior, sword love that it is, it's got a sharp edge. And merciful as I am. When I chop that head off. And knowing that you're probably an innocent, misguided, misled by demons in your head. The last battles will be in your head, your perspective, your perception. What is real? What is truth? What is a lie? And if you burned out your pineal gland, if you burned out the only singular object in your brain that doesn't have, your pineal gland... That throughout history, the pineal gland has been known to be your third eye, me, these eyes, and this eye, M-I-I, me, and we, all using those eyes spiritually with a good heart. Call your God what you may. You don't have to kill everybody to honor your God if we're all going to survive. God made all of us. And while he did make the demons and he did give them power, they had their turn. We're due for a millennium of peace and prosperity, don't you think? Because there's been a lot of crap splattered on everybody for a long time by the people in power, erasing our power, our knowledge. We have great power, people. Crystals, frequencies, Light, we have all sorts of ways to do things that are not being given to the general public, to the masses. You don't have to get old, you don't have to get weak so fast, so easy, unless you take poisons, unless you follow the standard television model of propaganda. They make you buy crap. I ate Cheerios, because that was the healthy stuff. Captain Crunch, I wasn't supposed to be eating all the time, but I tried to. And, oh my gosh, Cocoa Puffs. Oh my goodness. Alphabets, Captain Crunch. Oh my goodness. And the leprechaun with the mushrooms in my cereal in the morning. I mean, I was a sugar addict from childhood, depressed from childhood, suicidal in my teens, and later on, finally figuring out in my early 20s that sugar... 
Just give them speed. Just destroy them. Loving those children, giving them more sugar. While you inflate yourself like a balloon to your skin almost pops like a weenie and eating sugar and bad stuff because that's what you're taught. Oh, you've been a good girl. Let me give you candy. So now you've been a good girl, but you want to think of yourself as a good girl, so give yourself candy or whatever. Bail out of the conditioning. Get away from the TV. Stop wanting things you don't need because you watched it on TV and now you think that's going to bring you happiness. Get away from the TV. Start exercising. Control your diet while you got a chance to buy good food. Buy good food and quit buying crap because about soon, soon. If those trucks don't get to your town over these roads, you ain't going to have no more food. So buy quality food. Now, is my rant done? You all feel like daddy just got on your ass or something like that? I'm sorry. In case you didn't have a daddy. Let me fill in. Just for a minute. I know what it's like. My dad was gone a lot. Bore. And didn't come back the same man. I don't want to see more war. I know what daddies come back like after war. All you kids out there. They went through Desert Storm. They went through all that shit. You know what I'm talking about. Same with you women. You went to war, come back. Same game. Memory wipe doesn't work. There's no Dr. Spock to go, and you're better. When my dad came back, they didn't even know what PTSD was. In World War II, it was shell shock. They came back and they just kind of held out in a room and nobody bothered him and they were kind of just leave him alone. Shell shock. PTSD. We got so many names for this stuff, so many ways to tag people, but ultimately, love, caring, helping people out. Giving is the best thing you can do for therapy, for yourself. For all those kids who went out destroyed, let's show them how to build something. Give them hope. Don't throw them on the street and let them freeze to death. They'll all be gone by spring. They're already killing themselves at the rate of 22 a day. You think this is going to help out? Yeah, help speed it up. As I said, by spring, someone's going to say, where'd they all go? But don't worry, in a cancel culture, you won't even notice they've been censored, canceled, or gone, right? That's what that's for. If you let us be censored, if you let the writers writing fictional stories be erased, or presidents, because some liars are in charge, next thing you know, freedom is lost. Be free. Be careful. Please help. Help. Yes, I do want you to go ahead and literally, to some degree, Allow yourself to be mesmerized by the consideration of a social virus for freedom. Wibblery and wub. A small set of words that people can write poetry about, can talk about, can smile about. I mean, after all, who would ever think that a little earthworm with a blue racing cap and wearing glasses could bring a small set of words that would create an ideology, a unity of purpose, a world union of beings that were able to communicate through really wacky poetry and shit. Without the censors raising a bunch of cane. Imagine that. Darby did. Well, actually, he didn't imagine it. It was simply his job to distribute it to Earth. It's existed for eons. The Intercosmic Web Society is older than I can even measure with words. Worlds of united beings peacefully having made it to the next level, going out into the universe and sharing the good, or in some cases, enslaving the planets. I'm on the team that says we aren't going to enslave Earth, just so we get it straight. I'm an ambassador of WUB, W-U-B, World Union of Beings, occupying a vessel, in order to communicate with you in this plane. 
many of us here, lights and hardly seen before. That wasn't our job. The best way to stay invisible is stay crazy. Enough to be out of reach, out of touch. In the old days when they chased him down, at first it was the wizards and the kings who became bards and they ran and sang songs and stayed out of the reach of the king and the Catholic Church and the Romans as they came. Sadly, their kingdoms were trashed, destroyed, erased. The men of their villages killed the women impregnated with the new nation's blood. These are times past, battles past. The dark ages from 14 to 1600s, some things play again, different times. Same archetypes, if you only knew, same characters. So, that is Legionnaires of Light, guys. You never know when one might be hiding right next to you. There's a bell ringing. Thumper. You hear him? Boom. Of all places, Loyalty Islands. Now, why would you pick the Loyalty Islands? Who are you loyal to? Who has the power to thump the earth and wake everybody up? I don't know. Could be human. But what human is not made of greater things? The ether. God thought. Wub. Wub is the energy of soul, the energy of spirit, the energy of everything. It is the ether. It's called chi. It's called prana. It's called orgone energy. It has many names, but in Wibbley and Wub, because of course it's just a fantasy, it's called Wub, W-U-B in lowercase letters, energy of soul. And W-U-B in capital letters is the acronym for the world union of beings. And if I believe in those things, I'm a Wubber. Mm, I'm a Wubber. And I'm also a Wib. Capital W, capital I, capital B. I'm in living form. Wub, energy of soul, in a body. Now, when I make things, those are wibs, lowercase letters, W-I-B. They're little things I make, like houses, like these videos. I'm wibbleizing. I'm manifesting out of my energy of spirit, of soul, of God. These little creations, these videos. Why? It's time. I was told to take my whole lifetime to get here. And I said, <laughs> you're crazy. I'm just a crippled poor kid. I don't know anybody. I got no chance in any way, any form or otherwise. Why did you pick me, God? Why is it my job? You can't hang yourself. You can't kill yourself. Your angels will save you every time you come close. Why? Because you got a job. Once you figure it out, you don't need saving anymore. What you need then is just your faith. Please. I don't want to lead you to any particular God. But if you got one in mind, and he doesn't want to kill me. Talk to him. Get close. Tell him you love him in the mirror. Because that's who made you. That miracle that's you. Please. Say hello in the morning. Say hello in the morning over and over again. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you don't love you. Why would anybody else want to? And figure out what it is that you don't love about you, that stalls you, that keeps you from saying that 10 times in a row. And fix it. Change. Become a better person. Become the person you can love in the mirror unconditionally. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Stop living an unreal, untruthful life. Now's the time, guys. You don't believe me? Look outside. That's cold. It's not near as cold as the hearts of men. Many a men. Some aren't connected to God, guys. 
Some had a broken part. And they can't see spirit. Demons don't have hearts. Everybody says, oh, you can save anybody? No. Uh, 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 uh. They got a lesson to learn. That's called karma. You can save them from this life. Boom. Gone. You've been saved. You don't have to suffer anymore. You're dead. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of people. Not because I did it. I'm a peaceful guy. Some warriors, well, we, we don't unsheathe our sword unless we have to. And if we do, the sword of love has a large blade. You can spank somebody with it. You don't have to cut their head off like you do with that sword of anger. It's a very narrow sword, that sword of anger, and so sharp. You pull it out, and there ain't no patting anybody on the back. Because if you do, you're going to cut them. The sword of anger always cuts. The sword of love, it cuts just as good. And it breaks the sword of anger in half when they meet. Why? Love always wins because God is love. And that means truth. So what's that mean for liars? You're going to lose. I'm on dry lip. And I think it's about time I head on my way. I'll be back, but please, in the meantime, check on your neighbors, check on your friends. If you got some extra food, see where you can send it to. Get some propane. Remember, 32,000% increase of the price of natural gas on Friday. Now, you tell me how that happened, why that happened. I'm going to tell you that somebody's got a dirty finger sticking up somebody's, and they're about to go ahead and pull out a really rotten cherry that everybody in the public is going to have to sniff and eat. This is not good in a bad time. And I think there may be by some design when everybody's at their weakest point. Take their heat. As the Democrats do, give you a joint. Learn how to <laughs> make solar panels and program computers. All you other people lost your jobs. You know how it goes. In the meantime, as you're doing, like I said, planning for that new life, let's get right. Hey, I love y'all. Seriously. Even you bad ones. The trolls. I almost got a chance to munch on one yesterday, by the way. You know what? Something happened to all my trolls. I used to get at least five or six on it, munch on every time I put something up. And you know what? They're, they can't wait to do my whole damn thing so they can troll me or something. I don't know what's happened. Do you think the corona got the trolls? Hey, is there a version, a troll version out? Let me know on that. Somebody kick me up on that. I don't believe in that crap much. But if we can get that rumor going and people believe it, then that would mean that all the trolls believe that there's a certain type of... And because they believe it, they'll get it. Troll virus. Hmm. CV troll. Hey, Mr. Gates. Fossey, up. Uh, you out there? Hey, could you do me a favor? Whip one of those up so that way you have a way to get rid of everybody that you don't like after you're done using them. And you can throw them away with that special troll virus you got. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You got that already? Oh. Excuse me, guys. They're ahead of me. I had no idea. You know, sometimes I think I'm smart, but it's actually just that forecasting, that prophetic stuff. Those are chapters from the book. I keep getting they're sent back through that time capsule that says what they pulled off next. The virus that takes away your intense passion and religion, that virus that you can see them discussing in CIA meetings uh, 10 years ago. Those kind of things in the fantasy book. Well, you know what? They might turn out to be real, just like Orwell in 1984. So, y'all take care. And hey, if you get a spare troll, send him over here. I might be able to munch on him. Yeah. Bye.